And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to find the oldest tree, known tree, living tree in the world. The oldest living thing in the world. It's a bristletone pine tree in the Inyo National Forest. Uh, it's located just north of Big Pine and east of Bishop, but it's best to go to Big Pine, California. California is a home to the biggest tree by volume or mass. That's the General Sherman tree in Sequoia National Park. At the Redwoods National Park, the Hyperion tree, which is also a top secret tree that you'll probably never see if you visit the Redwoods Park. That's located in California on the, the northwest coast. But I'm going to give you the location and the pictures of the actual Methuselah tree. There's been a lot of misdirection. The National Forest is really tricky about this. You can see their atlas. It shows you this tree that's a bristlecone pine, but it's a dead bristlecone pine. So they are like, vandalize the dead one. Don't vandalize the oldest living tree in the world. So they keep it top secret to protect the tree. But I was able to find out its location on the internet. You probably can too if you're not too impatient. And I learned from my experience trying to find Hyperion. Uh, there's this great website called famousredwoods.com and so they'll give you the exact location of the Hyperion tree and which is the tallest tree in the world and the oldest known tree in the world which is Methuselah which is over 4,700 years old. Now Methuselah was discovered in like 1956, 1957 by this Dr. Shulman and Dr. Shulman was featured on the cover of National Geographic hugging Methuselah. But since then, the sneaky national forest has tried to hide the identity of Methuselah. And so there came out in like the 90s or something, this Nova documentary where you never saw Methuselah. And then there was like uh, a, you know, they on all their promotional material, non-Methuselah trees are said to be Methuselah. So to make it really sneaky for the people that aren't in the know. But it's a, it's a terrible kept secret because hundreds of people know this, if not thousands, where the actual location of Methuselah is. So you can know it too by watching this video. So Methuselah is a bristlecone pine in the White Mountain wilderness. And it's at about 10,000 feet. You have to go to the Methuselah Trail to find Methuselah. So you go to the Shulman Grove in the in the Shulman Visitor Center right there, and the Methuselah Trail will lead you to the Methuselah Grove. And it even says on the description to the trail, hey, you're entering the Methuselah Grove. This is where Methuselah is. They're not lying to you about that. They just don't tell you exactly which tree it is. Methuselah is between markers 16 and 17, so it's about 2.5 miles in uh, or about one and a half miles in if you go in the reverse direction. So somewhere between one and a half and two miles if you go in the reverse direction or if you go in the correct direction where the numbers go up, it's about two and a half to three miles in. And it's, uh, it's not much to look at. If you think about the oldest human in the world, they're not much to look at. They don't look like the most beautiful human in the world. And that's the same thing with Methuselah. Very forgettable tree, not a big tree. We're going to talk about the secrets to, to discovering which trees are old and which trees are young in the bristlecone pine forest in this video. But it's not going to be a big tree. It's not going to be a beautiful tree. It may not even look like a really wide tree because they just grow so slowly. And that's part of their secret of their success. They're just kind of in slow mode. And that's why they've been around since before the pyramids. Uh, you're never going to want to touch a bristlecone's um, pine needles. Those can be as old as 30 years old or older. So those are take a very long time to grow. So you don't wanna you don't wanna hurt the tree at all uh, by touching those, right? Obviously, there's no gathering anywhere in national parks, but especially here in such an ancient place, whether it's on the ground or not. But just try not to touch the tree, especially if you think it's older. So what's not a good indicator? Um, a bad indicator would be the size of the tree. So the the oldest trees are actually not the biggest in this forest so they're quite slow growing quite old so the 
The slowest growing trees are the oldest trees. They're almost in stasis. Uh, they're able to be so old because they don't have a lot of competition here. Um, there's a lot of not many men that come up here historically until modern times. And, uh, you know, they're also uh, have really hard bark, which is hard for the beetles to get into, right? And they sap pretty well to, to uh, discourage uh, invaders. So from famousredwoods.com, it's looking like that you really should look for the Methuselah tree. If you get this at the front, there's you can get this little map as you enter the trail. And uh, it's about like 16 or 17, almost midway through the trail, even though the trail only goes up to 24. Uh, it recommends you go in the one direction first um, because of social distancing and maybe the trail's not so big, they don't want people passing. Um, so I'll do that. Okay, so pretty much right where my thumb is, where it says Methuselah Grove between 16 and 17, is where we're going to look for that tree that featured Shulman in uh, National Geographic back in the 50s. And that's the one we believe is Methuselah. So behind me is a tree with a lot of root exposure. Um, it's got partial bark coverage. So that would make it suspect to be a, an old tree. Okay, so this gives us a really good uh, view of what the dolomite looks like. The rocks that the bristle cones uh, flourish in and no other plants can. Okay, so we got these trees here. They got partial bark. They've got very exposed roots just right here around four. So all of them are probably old, maybe a thousand old years old, maybe more than thousands of years old. The Methuselah Grove is about two miles from the, the start of the Methuselah Walk, which is about four and a half miles. So, you know, they've kind of put it in the ideal place that nobody's going to walk to. You're at 10,000 feet. People go for the Discovery Trail. That's only one mile. So it does, didn't get a lot of traffic, even though it was a nice day in the summertime, on the weekends. I didn't see a lot of people on the trail, and certainly not in the middle of the trail. But, you know, you would think the key tree would be kind of in the middle of the trail, right? You put that in the middle because you wanted the trail to go to actually the oldest tree. And I think that was kind of their thinking, and that's, that's why Methuselah is kind of in the middle. I'm at marker number 14, so uh, this is what it says for marker number 14. You're entering the Methuselah Grove. In 1957, Dr. Edward Edmund Schulman, searching for climate records and tree rings, courted a tree from this grove and discovered it to be over 4,600 years old. Its location is not disclosed. Several trees here are over 4,000 years old. Right, and you can kind of see that you've got some very thick trees that still have green shoots on them. They have tons of exposed roots indicating a erosion, uh, and they also have limited bark. Most of their sides may be barkless, but they're still alive. Uh, they they still have living parts, and they show great age. Now, I think I have a picture of it. Uh, I think the picture of the tree uh, was actually on the National Geographic of that year with Shulman holding it. And the picture of the tree I showed you uh, was in front of the, the, the uh, outhouse uh, right by the visitor center. So there were four pictures there. One of them was of Dr. Shulman holding a tree. And I believe that tree he was holding is Methuselah. And we're going to take a picture of it. Okay, so this tree has the exposed roots, and 15 here says, Time and gravity cause a lot of erosion on these steep slopes. Imagine standing in one place for thousands of years, anchored by roots. 
Slowly, soil washes downhill, exposing about one foot of soil every 1,000 years on average, right? And so if you look at this tree, its roots are exposed down, you know, six feet, you know, the size of me. Uh, so uh, it's an average. It's not a guarantee, but this is probably a really old tree is what they're saying. And it's still alive because it has the the green needles and it has bark. Okay, there's 16. It's between 16 and 17. All right, we're getting close. Okay, I've walked 16 and 17, but I've not found the exact tree yet. It's pretty nondescript, actually. Um... I, I have the GPS coordinates, so I'm going to get closer. Methuselah is behind me. It's that thin tree behind me. In the middle, towards the middle of the screen. It's that one. That's Methuselah. So the, the directions from Famous Redwoods is... Hike to 17, so go the opposite direction, so go with the numbers going down. Opposite to 17, on your left, is Methuselah. And that's the picture that they give you from the trail. See that it's got all those little spikes coming out? It's a very small tree, very skinny tree. Let's look at it more closely. Um, I'll give you the GPS coordinates, but, uh, it's right off the trail, like right next to the trail. You can see that it's got a lot of roots going way down and most of them are exposed. Um, certainly not one of the thickest trees, not even close. Not one of the tallest for sure. This is Methuselah. See, it's just spikes. Maybe his branches are so worn that they're just spikes now. So see how exposed those roots are, right? How deep and exposed, right? So that's the sign of the erosion. It's kind of protected here by this other down tree so people don't get too close. So Nova, when they did their uh, documentary and I encourage you to see it it's, it's lurking around here on YouTube uh, it uh, it said explicitly that they did not show you Methuselah uh, to to save it you know to, to preserve it so they featured a tree uh, which is often featured but it would be very odd if they explicitly said at the end that they did they hit it and the featured tree was Methuselah. Methuselah tree is about, you know, 1.5 miles from the reverse course or about 2.5 miles if you're going the regular course. So if you're following the numbers in order, it's about 2.5 miles, somewhere between, you know, two and a half and three miles. Uh, and it's about one and a half to two miles uh, for the if you're doing the reverse course. So it's a little quicker to do the reverse course than it is to um, do the suggested course of uh, going around. As I consider, you know, uh, what are some of the tells? Obviously the, the big tell is how much of the roots are exposed for Methuselah. But another is that, you know, the trail 
makes a jog, a very specific jog, very close to Methuselah, right? And I would think the thinking there is to avoid having uh, the trail go through Methuselah, but pass by it. Um, you know, whereas there are quite a number of living bristle cones here for which the trail does go through them. I mean, they probably cut through their dead roots, but they'd go straight through them. Uh, whereas Methuselah is just a little bit off to the side. So what kills a bristle cone in the end, uh, besides a uh, woodman's axe? Um, you know, beetles sometimes get them. Sometimes just bad weather. And they all, all of the tree dies off. This ancient one here has uh, a lot of roots exposed, but it looks like it's, the ground beneath it is falling away. Right, and as the ground beneath it washes away and its roots do not get deep enough, you just fall over. And that would be it. Under its own weight. And so I think that's probably the likely demise of Methuselah, barring intervention or barring uh, a woodman's axe or some other awful thing that may happen to it of the terrible things that men have done to ancient things, such as the tree that was destroyed in the Great Basin by a, a quote, quote, scientist, uh, which was supposedly older than Methuselah. So let's keep our fingers crossed that it's gravity that takes Methuselah and hopefully gravity will work slowly, erosion will work slowly. Subscribe to the Slow Boat Sailing channel. I'm Linus Wilson. Good luck.